Наш следующий докладчик Матоки Намати, университет Хоккайдо Сапора, Селищев, Селищев as a synthesist. Пожалуйста, Матоки, тебе слово. Да, здравствуйте. Все видно, да? Все видно прекрасно и слышно прекрасно. Хорошо, спасибо. Тогда вот так. У Все. тебя 30 минут, 20 из них на доклад, 10 на дискуссию, если бы... Хорошо, все ясно. Да. Спасибо большое. Um, Сейчас was not only a distinguished expert in studying linguistics with original ideas, but also was a skillful scholar who could synthesize the field. The first work of this kind was published in 1914, entitled uh, Later, Srechev published Slavyanskoye Zikov Znanie Tom Pervy Zapadno Slavyanskoye Zikie in 1941. The book was already completed in 1939 and highly evaluated by reviewers. According to Boris Lyapunov, one of the reviewers of his manuscript, в марте где я получил спешное предложение написать отзыв в большой работе профессор Сейшева за подсловянский язык. Очень важно, что теперь Гиза взялся напечатать ценную работу Сейшева, предоставляющую подробное обозрение современных литературных языков, директорологии и истории языков чешского, словацкого, верхней и нижней, людицких, польского, кашевского, и словенского и полацкого. Автор истерпал всю старую и новейшую литературу по истории и директорологии этих языков. В своем отзыве, который я представил в 8 апреля, я указал на необходимость скорейшего издания труда Сырищева, являющегося необходимым пособием для участия аспирантов и преподавателей. However, the book was not published immediately. His posthumous book Staroslavyansky Zik shared a similar yet worse destiny, that is, this publication was completed as early as in 1940, but was published much later in 1951. Both publications were written in the spirit of historical Slavic linguistics, which was not in line with the so-called Marism, which was still dominant in the USSR those days. As was written in the introduction of Slavyansky Ziko Znani Tom Pervy, Serishchev had a plan to publish um, similar works on South Slavic Volume 2 and East Slavic Volume 3. However, the publication of those volumes was not materialized due to his long lasting illness and the death which happened on December 6, 1942. With regard to the destiny of his manuscripts, According to Ashnin and Alpatov, 1994, According to uh, Vasilevskaya, 1968, the archival material were passed from the Department of the Russian Language at Moscow State Pedagogical Institute, named after Lenin, to Central State Archive of Literature and Art, USSR, in 1952. This archive is named now the Russian State Archive of Literature and Art, Rugal, following Viktor Vinogradov's advice. The website of Rugali showed the following result. According to the website, the manuscript was written sometime around 1941. The text consists of 623 sheets of paper. The manuscript starts from page 181 with the chapter Usual Slavyanska Grupa, which is section 258, and ends on page 510 with no section number. There are also many missing parts concerning the gap between pages, as well as 60 pieces of the fragment of paper. Thus, this is not a full manuscript. So one may wonder 
if the Rugali item on the 31 is a material that Ashni and Alpatov thought to be lost. Um, when taking a brief look at the manuscript, one can immediately realize that the above mentioned description of from Rugali website is incorrect. The manuscript was written in the pre-revolutionary orthography. Indeed, Khrushchev wrote and published his work in the pre-revolutionary orthography even after 1917, but this function ended in 1925. Additionally, one can point out the fact that the latest publication Khrushchev cited in his manuscript was Andre Mazon's uh, 1925 article. Thus, one can conclude that the manuscript was written no later than uh, 1925, not around 1941. Now, one may wonder if Khrushchev prepared second volume of Slavyansko i Znanie, which was Slavyansko Iziki, prior to publishing the first volume dedicated to West Slavic languages? The answer is most probably no. According to Lyapunov, again, uh, from the letter to Samuel Barisovich Bernstein, dated January 15, 1940, Professor Hrishchev, который просил у меня ее для такого же обозрения южнославянских языков, какое он сделал в прошлом году по языкам западнославянским. Но я не знаю его новейшего адреса. This letter showed that Hrishchev started to prepare the second volume of Slavyansko Izikoznanie only after the completion of his manuscript of the first volume Slavyansko Izikoznanie западнославянской языке. Also, Lyapunov wrote to Bernstein on January 24th, 1943, as follows. Yesterday, it is after the death of Professor Serishev. Я с нетерпением ждал напечатания первого выпуска второго тома славянского языка знания, прочитанного мною до сдачи в печать по просьбе издательства Учпедгиз. Он представляет прекрасно составленный и стерпевающий библиографией очерк развития общеславянских звуков, как вводную часть в фонетику древнего славянского языка. Этот вполне готовый к печать и всем славистам необходимый ценный труд должен быть издан в ближайшей очередь. Жаль, что э, Сыричев не успел приготовить весь том о изнославянских языках, которыми он раньше так усердно занимался. Но, наверное, в его uh, черновиках можно найти много для истории болгарского языка. Серишев's original plan was also reviewed. That is, his posthumous Staroslavyansky язык was originally written as part one of the second volume of Slavyanskoe Izikoznani. Considering all those points, Ashnin and Alpatov seems to be wrong. Most probably, the manuscript of the second volume of Slavyansko Iziko Znanie, Ijno Slavyansko Iziki, did not exist then, and the manuscript preserved in Rugali is not the manuscript of the volume in question. So what is then the manuscript preserved in Rugali? According to Bernstein 1987, Serishchev completed the manuscript Vigenie of Slavyansko in 1925, <coughs> which coincides with the years of Andre Mazon's above mentioned article. And Serishchev sent the manuscript to the historical and the philological department of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. The reason was that such a book was, could not be published in the USSR due to the dominating Marism. However, the manuscript was not published in Bulgaria either, though Sechev waited more than six years without any notice. In the end, manuscript was returned to Sechev probably in 1932. 
the probable reason was mentioned by Samuel Berenstein. As you can see on the screen, in an unpublished part of his memoir, Zigzaggy Pamiach, dated October 18, 1979, Samuel Barisovich wrote retrospectively, retrospectively like that. Is that your piece? Ne pavayalsky, abnajic, atricace ne starani bulgarsky, sviazi, sirisheva. Ne krasibi pastupak, miletica, surukopisiu, sirisheva, vidini, vidini, sravianski, zikov. Sirishev prikrasna panimal, što on nužem bulgari, tolika kak astori, sledovanje Makedonije, a na drugie razdieli sravianski bulgaram na plebac. Indeed, Sirishev Sofia Trilogy, or Palog Ivo Vargarska in Asiri, 1929, Sravianska in Asiri, Albani, 1931, Makedonske Kojiki, 1933, were published rather quickly. So, in his letter to Stefan Mladenov, dated December 3, 1931, Sirishev wrote as follows. Chiraya Professor Miretichu, i w Bargalskiej Akademii Nauk o swoim kursie Sławiańskiego Języku Znania. Ja gotów zakracić ten kurs, wypuścić w wodny czas i pierwsze dwa dzieła, prawosławiański i bastoczno-slawiański. Ostanęcie oddziały, južno-slawiański i zapadno-slawiański, i Sławianie i ich sąsiedzi. Na rozjednienie tych oddziałów ja nie mogę tak gracić. Therefore, the manuscript preserved in Rugali seems to be part of his unpublished Virginia Virginia Slavyanskih Zikov. At the same time, this letter explains the original structure of this book. Introduction, Proto-Slavic, East Slavic, South Slavic, West Slavic, Slavs and their neighbors. Finally, the part of East Slavic is preserved in Rugali. The manuscript consists of only 27 pages. So most parts are lost. Introductory part and the main text starting from the section 118 and ending in section 200 with a considerable number of missing pages. So what's inside of this manuscript or fragmented manuscript? The structure of the chapter is as follows. So first, there is a section starting with the section number 258, dealing with the migration of Slavs to the Balkans. And the next section or next part uh, will uh, de uh, deal with the Bulgarians. So as you can see, Bulgarians, the Bulgarian language, literary language and the script, orthography, phonetic structure, and direct text and glossary bibliography. Unfortunately, totally, uh, the, the part of the sections dealing with the, um, Bulgarian dialectology is missing, which is very unfortunate, by the way. I will tell you about it later. The next part uh, deals with uh, Serbo Croatia. Um, I don't read uh, the structure of this um, part anymore, but you can see uh, the structure on the screen. The following section uh, is dedicated to the study of the Slovene language. And again, I don't read it anymore, but uh, you can uh, see uh, the structure of this section, this uh, part uh, on screen. So after the sections uh, on the Slovene language, there is another part uh, which deals with the language contact and the multilingualism but no section titles are provided and there are so many missing pages. So it is very difficult to get a full picture of this section uh, in any case. So, as I said, the last section in the manuscript dealing with language contact and the multilingualism in the Balkans have many missing pages and are fragmented. Therefore, one cannot get a full picture of those sections. However, on page 555, one can read. So these sections were most probably originally not part of Eugenia Slavyanska Grupa, 
but of another chapter entitled the Slavs and their neighbor. So in today, I will not discuss this, this section in my presentation. The structure of each section reminds us of his 1914, 1914 book, Virginia Slavnice Indeed, in a sense, his manuscript was an updated and enlarged version of that publication. <coughs> because Serishchev recycled various parts of the 1914 book and expanded it following the change since 1914. So on the, le uh, on the la left, you can see uh, the uh, printed version of the Virginia of Slavnice Grammatical Slavyansky Zikov. And on the right, you can see the manuscript. As you can see, the, uh, all, the same part is repeated on the, in the manuscript uh, in uh, 1925. Except for the very first and last sections, the structure of Eugenio Slavyansky Grupa is quite transparent. The first subsections entitled by a nation name give an overview of the history of each South Slavic nation. The immediately following section with the name of each language deals with the historical phonetics and morphology, but without a single word about syntax. In a neogrammarian manner, as is the case with his Slavyansko Izikoznanie, Napato uh, Slavyansky Izike. The following sections show direct features of each language. The next three sections provide the basic information about the literary language of each South Slavic group. The subchapter of Serbo Croatian and Slovene were complete, were almost complete and fully covered, including the most complicated accentology. So we can hardly find almost any original analysis of these languages. Their description is very detailed, precise, and based on the up to date, of course, until to 1925, all major reliable works such as Ramos, Breznik, Skravets, Berlich, Ivšić, Reshetar, and so many others, including uh, important Russian scholars in the field. Also, one can notice that unlike another compendium of similar nature, like Chimofei Florinsky's Lexi Paslavyansk Mizikov Nanyu, Serishchev's work can be characterized as his thorough historism, including extra linguistic issues as the first section in the manuscript and sections dealing with each South Slavic group starts with history of each nation. In the very first section on the history of South Slavs, Serishchev state as follows. Пакуя в каких языковых отношениях, отношениях находились эти славяне между собой в первое время по занятии Балканского полуострова, а затем э, в последующие века их жизни здесь? Вот вопросы, миновать которые не может не только историк культурной жизни этих славян, но и исследователь судеб из языка этих славян. These questions might be, at least today, и to at least uh, to some scholars uh, dealt with usually beyond linguistics per se, but Seychef answered these questions in a detailed manner. This multidisciplinary and extra-linguistic approach to the history of the Slavic languages is essential for Seychef. Indeed, it is this approach that makes him original and distinguished in the history of Slavic studies, as can be seen in his other capital works, such as Palok, Slavyansko Nasrenyi Albani, not to mention his compendium, Slavyansko Izikoznanie, Tom Pierdu. So what is interesting is the manuscript. 
the most interesting sections would have been those dealing with Bulgarian. Alcestis was one of the most distinguished scholars in the field um, at that time. And the Macedonian issue was very disputable then, particularly among Serbs and Bulgarians with regard to the creation of some direct and eventual territories. In this sense, it is unfortunate that the Bulgarian section have many missing parts, including the one on Macedonian dialects. However, one can see in existing parts that Selyshev tried to be objective in a linguistic sense, unlike his contemporary scholars such as Alexander Belich or Stefan Mladeno, who made claims with political overtones that were far from linguistic facts sometimes. In some cases, the shift stance may be even venturesome, since as a sample of a Bulgarian dialect, he offered Stanoevich's presenting of dialect material published in Srpski Directorship Vornik in the Bulgarian section. Selyshev opined also as follows. The Severna Macedonia Nacineta Sporni Oblasti Nezdu Bargarami Serbami. Sporni oblasti prodojeca i dalšek u sjeberu, u Branjek, u Leskovacu, u Pirotu, Zajčaru, u Vidinu. Bez pristavstva i sljedevanje imejuših se direktorogičevskih danih, svidjetelstvuje o tom, što sjeberna časa Makedonija po svojim govorom dalžna biti atnisna ku izikovoj oblasti Vargarskoj. Pa srednje je prinadležiti i govori na vastoke od linji Branja, Pirot, Belgracik, Nizhne Čičinja, Čimoka do Dunaja. This opinion, uh, oh, sorry. On the other hand, it is perhaps interesting, Serishev include the same dialect, the President Timok dialect, as the dialect of Serbo-Croatian in the Serbo-Croatian section as well, where he gives its linguistic overview with the following comments. Govori prizvenotimočskoj grupe i vrani periodu svoje žizni preživali ađinakove procesi sa govorami srpskimi. Pod nje govori prizvenotimočskoj grupe je boli povrećeni v sferu vozdjistija slavijanskih govora Vastoka, Bargarski. S nječimi govorami prizvenotimočskoj grupa preživila opšte novštjestva formalnih i sintaksičeskih. Jibrenje opštih borgarskih i prizvenotimočskih govora se biđete se biti o svijaskah ećih grup, o svijaskah sučestvujuših v prošljom. I čivljenje atnjuć ne utračat svoje pokazatelnosti v atnošenje svijaze. Jesli bi talčok k presađenju nekaterih čivljenja da bodi izvnje sa strane iznojizične. Občnosti procesov ostajote izvikovim faktorom za slavijan bargarskih i prizreno timotskih. Inicijativa v ečih preživanjih izhađila od slavijan Bargarskih. The reason why one and the same dialect group is discussed in the Bulgarian and Serbo-Croatian sections was not so clear, but it is possible that unlike Northern, North Macedonian dialects, the President Timok dialect does have common structural feature shared by the two languages. So Selyshev might, might have seen in this dialect a kind of dualistic affiliation as a linguistic reality that traditional dialects often have, particularly from a diachronic perspective. So let me conclude my talk. The manuscript in question turned out in the end not to be a manuscript of Slavyansko Iziko Znanje from Staroy, usually Slavyansko Iziki per se, but fragmented parts of this shift unpublished Vidjenje Vidjenje Slavyansko Izikov completed in 1925 which might have appeared in Bulgaria or elsewhere. It was a pity that the book was not published in the end uh, because a limited number of pa preserved parts certainly prove the manuscript could be indeed the first ever written in Russian. Oh, first thorough, synthetic, and interdisciplinary compendium on Slavic historical linguistics, which was ever written in Russian. Although limited time does not permit me to go into details of the manuscript, 
But what I discussed in my presentation could show to a certain extent, of course, that in terms of its size, content, scholarly objectivity, and level, and originality in its structure and approach, Tereshev's manuscript shows the author's high ability to synthesize the latest and best knowledge about South Slavic languages and with the linguistic and extra linguistic history. Thank you for your attention. Um, I'd like to especially mention some uh, friends and colleagues who helped me to conduct my research. First of all, my special gratitude goes to Acad uh, academic Svetlana Tolstaya for consultation, uh, Greb Filipenko and Masaru Ito for the support to find the materials at the archives. And of course, these lovely photo, of course, I'm talking about lovely about Serichev, not about me, was taken by uh, Irina Alexandrovna Dakova. Thank you very much, Stasia Basho. Большое спасибо Матоке за очень, простите, большое спасибо Матоке за очень интересный доклад. Есть ли у нас вопросы? Да, я вижу. У меня очень простой вопрос. Очень простой. Матоке на могиле Селищева вы где? Я не увидел просто. Это Uh, no, Irina Alexandrovna, помнит. Это, э, сейчас, секундочку. Я не увидел даже, да, это школа имени Селищева, а какой области не увидел. Мелкие буквы очень. А, да, это, а вот это все. О, Там написано. Это, да, школа имени Болова, как, где родился Селищев, да. Да. Но это, конечно, вот он похоронен в Москве. Вот mm -hmm. я сейчас я вам покажу. Да-да. Село Волкова, Липецкой области, правильно? А, да, 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 точно, да. Я, нет, я не помню вашу. Mm -hmm. Хорошо, по следам Гумбольта. Спасибо. Спасибо большое. Пожалуйста, вопросы. У нас есть еще три минуты на вопросы. Ну, мы их не будем, наверное, молчать. Да? Безусловно. Давайте, если можно, я скажу два слова. Я постараюсь уложиться в минуту. Мне очень нравятся доклады коллеги Матоки на мате о деятельности российских и советских славистов, южнославистов. Я с большим интересом слежу за его работой в архивах и желаю успехов в этой деятельности. Мне кажется, что контекст исторический и политический, в котором работал Селищев, нужно будет, конечно же, всегда учитывать при анализе его заключений. К этому контексту относится то печальное обстоятельство, что в середине 30-х годов, ну, вокруг 35-го года, уже когда прошло дело славистов, уже когда были многие расстреляны, репрессированы, в институтах и учреждениях научно-исследовательских Советского Союза или Советской России, началась идеологическая кампания, связанная с усилением роли коммунистической партии, с усилением идеологической составляющей в работах советских лингвистов. Это известно очень хорошо по истории Института лингвистических исследований Российской Академии наук в Санкт-Петербурге, который вот вчера отметил свое столетие, так условно. Но... Есть интересные архивные материалы, свидетельствующие о деятельности славянского кабинета в как раз 1934-1935-1936 году в Ленинграде. И в этой деятельности обращает на себя внимание аспирант Димитров, который активно опубликовал статьи 
о, по македонскому вопросу. В русле решения Коминтерна о признании македонского языка самостоятельного и опять-таки в русле политических доктрин о фашистском характере болгарского государства, действий болгарской буржуазии по подавлению о подавлении этнических меньшинств, прежде всего о подавлении македонцев, то есть самостоятельной нации, с самостоятельным языком. Так вот, мне кажется, что в 30-е годы возникла такая атмосфера, в, в которой публиковать воззрения нейтральные, объективные, собственно, сугубо научные, академические, как это пытался делать или старался делать Силищев до революции, в первые годы, стало просто невозможно. Просто невозможно. Я думаю, что он просто побоялся бы опубликовать. Я думаю, что он побоялся просто опубликовать свои воззрения на болгарский диалектный континуум в том виде, в котором они у него лично сформировались. С учетом того, что он мог просто политически пострадать из-за неправильную политическую позицию. Доносы всем и средств. Вот. Поэтому большое спасибо за доклад. Я с интересом жду дальнейших ваших открытий на, на этой почве. Большой вам успех. Андрей Николаевич, большое вам спасибо. И ждем, конечно же, публикации, поскольку это очень важный для нас материал. Если вопросов больше нет, давайте мы, наверное, объявим паузу. У нас есть три минуты до следующего доклада. Вот. Но поскольку мы в Zoom, я думаю, что кофе можно будет пить параллельно с докладом. И наш, наша следующая мини-секция начнется через 3 минуты в 13.00 по московскому времени. Вот. Мы не прерываемся. Я остановлю сейчас запись. Если есть какие-то вопросы к Матоке, то вы можете, конечно, их сейчас задавать. А в 13.00 по московскому времени через 3 минуты мы начнем опять вот уже со следующим, со следующим докладом Ирены Савицкой. Вот. Я останавливаю запись.